Welcome back everyone, my name is Nifey, and today we are playing Necrobarista Walking to the Sky Update. Let's begin. There's a lot of reading to do. I enjoy it, I enjoyed it. The original game, I really enjoyed that one. It was short and sweet. So this is a, a visual novel where you just have to click a lot. But I don't really want to interrupt or skip anything. It's the music that makes this game, 100%. Is there an auto advance? I forget. Ton bent down to face the robot, which seemed to alternate between retreating and approaching him. It appeared wary at first before it began skittering about like a little critter wanting to play. Fetch! Is that a milk carton? <laughs> Maybe you'll have an easier time with this. Okay. This is basically Persona, press X to continue. The throne hex nut bounced away to some unseen corner and Tom began looking for another loose object to throw. He ran his hand along the shelf and found a weird washer shaped more like a thin cylinder than a typical washer. Heh, <laughs> catch. Nice. Tom was a bit disappointed to see the bot go. Uh, the bot did seem like a social animal that was probably interested in seeing what other people in the cafe might be willing to play with it, so he didn't take its departure personally. She's like, whoosh. okay, now press click <laughs> to click to continue. Why? Why do I have to click to continue? There has to be an auto advance button, right? As if to answer his plea for a distraction, a girl appeared at the top of the stairs. Hey. She spoke in a manner that acknowledged Tuan's presence, but was uncertain of what else to say. She quickly broke eye contact, and her eyes started scanning the floor as if she was looking for something. Ton, feeling awkward and unsure if he should say anything to the girl, turned to the shelf and looked at the books furthest away from her. Clearly, the girl had come upstairs looking for something, though it seemed that something wasn't a conversation. For a moment, he found himself imagining what it would be like to have an excuse to talk to her. He just wanted a chance to get her to know her better. But of course, he had to be realistic. He didn't have the initiative to approach a girl like her, nor was he sure what else, what else to talk about. She was too determined, too focused on whether, whatever she was looking for to tolerate being distracted by conversation with a stranger. Everything about her appearance, from the way she dressed to the way she moved, implied that she had come here deliberately while she exuded a clear sense of purpose, she seemed hesitant to greet him. Okay, so they're both kind of... Okay. Really? You want me to click? Click! Hey. Ah! Yeah? I was just wondering... Did you happen to see a ri A ring? Like, uh... Like this? Oh, like a ring. Yeah, I think I took it off and left it here somewhere. No, I don't think I remember seeing a ring that looked like that. Ton realized the girl hadn't actually described the ring to him, apart from telling him it was some sort that one might wear on a finger. Ugh. Wait. Wait a minute, he has headphones, but it's not plugged in. Really? Do people wear... Are you sure? It was just a metal band. 
No rock or etchings or anything. A metal band? <laughs> Not like a Metallica kind of metal band? No. Not like. Okay. But you know, like a piece of jewelry. He suppressed his anger. He suppressed his urge to get into a, well, actually, argument about heavy rock versus metal and which side of the divide Metallica fell on. You mean just a metal ring? Yes, I'm looking for a metal ring. And it looks like a metal ring. Something that looks like a washer, but with the sides curled inward. Yeah, something like that. Uh, he felt the color drain from his face as he recalled the washer that he had thrown to the bot just a minute earlier. Yeah, I saw something like that. There was a little bot around here playing with some small metal objects. I think one of them was the ring you were looking for. Oh great, is it? Oh, you don't need to... Ah, uh, it's no problem. I mean, it's probably easier for me to look around where I saw it then than try to describe it to you. I could swear it was just around here. Ton recalled the bot that had... had run away with one of the items he had thrown earlier. He spotted the hex nut and screw that. He had tossed, still lying on the floor, but the ring was nowhere to be seen. Sorry, I think I'm may have run off with it. I think it may have run off with it. Huh. That's a nice looking, that's a nice, that's a nice cafe. Look at that. Pretty. Then again, <laughs> some bookshelves are kind of copied and pasted <laughs> at the top. Uh, you don't need to apologize. I mean, it's not like it was your fault, right? Yeah. <laughs> he actually enunciated the syllables, haha, -ha, like a person reading it off a page in a way it sounded nothing like laughter. Well, thanks for checking. Maybe I'll see if I can find that bot. Camera angle. She hesitated, looking around as if she was a bit unsure what to do. He scambled for the right words to say on the spot and blurted out the first things that came to mind. It's me. Nani. Nani. I mean, it's me that's going to help you find that ring. Oh, that's not really necessary. It wasn't clear to Ton whether she was saying that to indicate she w didn't want to impose or felt like she would be better off without his assistance. He decided to address both points. I got nothing better to do, and I know this place pretty well. You're new here, right? Let me lend you my limited knowledge of how this cafe is laid out. Uh, if it's not too imposing, I'm happy to help. Truth be told, helping this girl locate her missing ring was a bit troublesome, but he felt responsible for creating this situation. I appreciate it. She's all like freaking. By the way, I, I don't think I got your name. I'm Ton. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's like, ah! I'm Hannah. Hey, Ton, I'm Hannah. Ooh. Oh. Oh, yeah. I really hope I don't have to mute the music in this game. YouTube's like copyright claim and we may have to uh, mute it unfortunately well how long is this animation or does it repeat itself 
Let's see. Oh, shit! <laughs> this is like the perfect... <laughs> this is the perfect, like, waiting screen. Right? So, does this ring of yours have any special significance? Something like a special gift? She's like, what the freak? Sentimental value. He still hadn't gone around to telling Hannah that he was responsible for the loss of her ring. It's kind of a remembrance of who I was in my early days. Just a personal effect, mate. It was a part of my whole goth phase. I used to have nine other rings just like that one, and wore all of them every day. Mm-hmm. Now I'm down to much more tasteful, a more tasteful single ring. Goth phase. This guy's a goth, isn't he? Oh, wearing those rings was just about as far as I got into the goth aesthetic. I don't think my limited makeup budget would ever allow me to go full goth. I guess I was sort of drawn to it during the brief stint where I hit an obsession with death. It's also coincided with me at a time in my life where I wrote down a lot of really bad poetry. I guess it makes me pretty weird. I don't think it's weird. And besides, it would be pretty hypercritical for me to judge you based on that. I was never a goth, but if you've ever been into an emo concert, you might have seen me in the crowd. Okay, so she's a goth. He's an emo. I appreciate the sentiment, but how do I know if you're a good judge of what's weird and what's not? After all, the most most normal people don't go to emo concerts. Well, the lion's share of bad poetry is probably written by teenagers. So, you're definitely not alone. Speaking from experience... Do you have an old live journal of shame I should look at for proof? I, uh... Don't worry, I'm not actually gonna try and find your teenage blog... ...to try and expose you as a melancholy sad sack who tried to express himself in a medium he had no aptitude for. Cripes that fate would wish on anybody. Keep it buried, hidden from the world, never to be discovered. Dude, this is a long walk. I don't think it's all that bad thing. Not a bad thing to have written bad poetry. <laughs> I guess the whole trying to find beauty and death thing doesn't... does feel pretty adolescent in the sense that... That's... that is when everyone's emotions are turned up to 11. But I think there's more to that. It's the time of life where it feels like you're becoming an adult, but you aren't allow really allowed to have, full have the full experience of being one. <laughs> okay. You're still experiencing a kid-friendly version of the world. If you live in a sanitized, sanitized suburb, it feels fake. And in trying to avoid that fakeness, maybe teens run in the opposite direction. They embrace the darkness things, the darkest things they can find, and develop a fascination with death. I guess teenagers don't typically confront death directly. Todd tried to keep his voice low as he said the word death. Death. He was becoming increasingly self-conscious about who might be listening to the conversation from beyond the grave? After all, a person's voice could carry pretty far in a place like this. He knew well enough about... He knew enough about the cafe that not all the patrons were living. Are we like across the... Did we just walk a football field? If a typical teenager has no experience around being deaf, I guess that means I'm atypical. Get it?
You like someone who wants to ask a question, but isn't sure if he's allowed to ask it. That's a big assumption. Chegaimasu? I'll take that as a yes. I'll take that silence as confirmation that I was correct to take your uh as a, as a yes. Well, you're not wrong. I hope you're not going to hold that against me. Not at all. It's kind of mutual. You're not sure if you're allowed to ask, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell. You're definitely not allowed to tell. I mean, I don't sound over eager when I say that. You're allowed not to not tell if you don't want to tell, so you don't have to treat it like a question that needs to be answered. It's not a question, but it sounds like an invitation. Exactly. Wait, is that it? The I need everyone to hydrate. Oh, man. Okay. Ah! <laughs> when I was 13. Wait, what are we... From a ring to... When I was 13, my mother di was diagnosed with leukemia. And my father disappeared as soon as he found out. I spent the next year coping with crippling abandonment issues and a constant feeling of dread and fear of death. He saw something in her distant eyes that implied there was no, there was more to this story. But for the time being, he was okay with Hannah holding parts back. This is the body language of just like protecting yourself. When someone does this, they're hiding something. They're not hiding, yeah, they're hiding something. Or they're cold. This doesn't mean I'm professional or business. This is like... That's heavy. Thank you for sharing it. <laughs> that's not the response she wants to hear. That's not the response I want to hear. Enhance. How far is it going to zoom? If I wait here... I can't stop. It was a dark time. Lucky for me, that part of my life is buried deep in my past, never to be seen by the rest of the world. Unless you count the old live journal blog that I forgot the password to, so I can never log in and delete it. I think you can actually issue a DMCA request and the site has to honor it. They'll send a thing to the account that posted it, asking them to counterclaim. What the f If the account is abandoned, you can get your stuff scrubbed from the internet. I wasn't looking for a solution. See, he's going to the problem solving mode to that particular problem. But that actually sounds really useful. I might have to act on that advice. Oh, I'm really good at offering unsolicited assistance. Uh -huh. For example, one time this girl came to me looking for a missing ring, and I told her I'd help her find it. Nice. I hope the story ends with you actually helping her find it instead of getting distracted by some irrelevant thread of conversation. Break that glass. What the? Checkers, 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 checkers. I don't remember exactly how the story ended, but I remember the big turn turning point might have been when we decided to study the bookshelf. Hmm. A bookshelf just like the one we're standing in front of. Just like this one, in fact. Ah! 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 Can we stop now? I mean, I've always been one to appreciate commitment to a bit. But this is getting kind of exhausting. The bookshelf had more than a few nooks and crannies that a bot might hide in. Even if Tan didn't find the bot that had Hannah's ring, he might fervet. 
without some details that can give a clue to its whereabouts. Mate. What? Are you sure it's okay to move stuff around like that? Trying to try to not try not to sneeze unless you want to see this thing reduce to splinters. Is it really that fragile? I'm speaking from experience. The shoebox rog is not a plane known for its tenacity. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure I caught that. What is this thing called? The shoebox rog for short for rise off ground. It's a class it's a classic capable of self-sustained indoor flight for up to 40 seconds. Are you an expert on every model that's on these shelves? No, nope, just the balls of wood airplanes. 40 seconds? When did you become such an expert? Ah, uh, summer camp. It's a subject that's immensely fascinating to 12 year old boys who then carry that obsession to their grave. And I'm here thinking that I missed out on something important by never going to summer camp. Actually, you kind of did. I'm sure that the physics of a rubber band powered airplane. No, I mean the other stuff. Oh! I'm not a big fan of archery or volleyball either. You really think that's the reason people carry summer camp memories with them their entire lives? Is it because the curriculum is so well formulated? I guess I always figured that learning how to fish or shoot a bow and arrow was meant to be a delightful experience. Sadly, it's something the rest of us non-summer camp going plebeians, plebeians were doomed to never enjoy. The bows and arrows are probably the least interesting part of the archery station. The fun part is going to the archery station during your free time and running into a friend and saying, hey, I haven't seen you since breakfast. Oh, did breakfast in Melbourne? Oh, so good, so good. Breakfast is a really important part of the summer camp experience, huh? Well, yeah, it kind of is. And probably the most common one, since everyone eats breakfast at the same time in the same dining hall. Funny, I was here thinking that I was having fun with my friends when all the time I could have enjoyed a much more enriching experience. I like this. I like this one. I like this. <laughs> if we only arranged to meet at the, an archery station, is that arranged to meet part that causes you to miss? It's that arranged to meet part that causes you to miss out on the magic. R randomly running into someone that you know is a different experience than planning to meet up with someone. True. Hmm. There's no replacement for serendipity. Ah! <laughs> and so you bring your friends to summer camp so that so you can have these serendipitous encounters with them. No, I don't know anyone the first time I went. So how did you serendipitously encounter all these friends? You make friends while you're there. Sounds like hard work, starting from square one. Ah, uh, it's not. The thing about summer camp is that you make friendships with people who you know won't be part of your life after several weeks. Mm-hmm. You meet lots of people. Spend a short amount of time with them and then in all likelihood never see them again unless you go to serious lengths to stay in contact. And that's that's the fun part. Knowing that whatever friends you make, you'll be separated from them? Yeah, in a way. When you only have a short time together, everyone is really all about making the most of that time. Zoom. Are we gonna have coffee anytime soon? Anyway, it doesn't look like it's here either. 
Well, good news is there's still lots to gr still lots of more ground to cover. That's good news. <laughs> I prefer it if our search radius were a bit smaller. Agreed. Well, it would be really bad if we found out we completely searched every place it could be and hadn't found it. This show? Plus, if there are any random items lying about here, you'll probably be able to see them right away. No need to dig around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, stop! You're the first person I've ever heard who said expiring relationships are a good thing. I think a part of me is afraid that relationships I have are temporary. Mm -hmm. The opposite things happens way too often. You see that it happens whenever someone moves into your neighborhood. You have those moments where you discover that you have new neighbors and it's like, oh, we should have them for dinner sometime. Sometime it gets defined as next week and next week becomes next month. And you put off more and more until eventually you realize you spent years living to, next to people that you don't really know because you never spent time with them. You never took the time to get really to really get to know them and form anything resembling an intimate emotional relationship. There was never a sense of urgency. There are people in your life who are just sort of always there, and because you never think about the day they'll leave, you'll never spend time to enjoy the moments you have together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was that like the author or director going, <laughs> listen to me. The best friends I've ever made were the ones that came with an expiration date. Here we go, Necrobarista, come back to it full circle. You thought about this a lot. I like, I like this, I like this screenshot. Yeah, I guess I have. Whoa. Is that why you enjoyed going to emo concerts? A live show seems like a good place to make a friend, spend several hours with them, and then never see them again. Concert going was not a regular thing for me. In fact, it was a kind of one-time thing. Music is usually a deep personal experience for me. I still have a Fallout Boy album that I would listen to when I was an eight year eight every night and I as I cried into my pillow <laughs> that music was that bad huh I was brought to tears because the lyrics made me realize the pain and futility of my own existence a lot of my adolescence was filled with this vague feeling that nothing meant anything the times I spent listening to that album felt like staring into the abyss and facing that reality directly. Musically, I found the album to be quite enjoyable. Oh, good. Because if you were taking a shot at Fallout Boy, you might have to trade blows. That still leaves us with a question of why didn't you, why you kept going back to the album if every single night it made you realize you suck. I actually enjoy burying my face in my pillowcase and loudly sobbing as I'm overwhelmed by a creeping feeling of existential angst. We're just trying to find a ring here. I get that some people try to enjoy a good cry from time to time. You know, it feels so good to like get your pillow and just like, ah! Scream into it <laughs> after a long day. 